In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, and we ask for our God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word, through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, your God, of your fathers is giving you. Therefore, I teach you the statutes and decrees as the Lord, my God, has commanded me, that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully, for thus will give you evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of those statutes and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has gods so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are just as this whole law, which I am setting before you today? However, Take care and be earnestly on your guard not to forget the things which your own eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your memory as long as you live, but teach them to your children and to your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, praise the Lord Jerusalem. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. He spreads snow like wool, frost he strews like ashes. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. May the Lord be on my heart and my lips that I may proclaim your holy gospel worthily and well. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so 
will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us may enjoy watching uh, mystery, either mystery theater or mystery novels. And usually, what has to happen in order to really understand and appreciate a, a good mystery story is the willingness to observe patterns, observe, you know, um, people's behavior, you know, certain kind of things, and try and find what is the cause. Who is responsible for causing some kind of a disturbance or who's responsible for some kind of a plot? And then if we're tuned into that and really um, analyzing that carefully or on the lookout for that cause, when it does happen, when it's finally revealed in the story, if we had been attentive all along, we could see how now everything makes sense. It all fits into the perpetrator's scheme. Everybody, you know, who was doing this behavior, this pattern was cooperating with him, or this was some kind of a trademark that he left them um, wherever he caused some kind of a disturbance. So like one thing, one fact, one person makes many other things make sense. Now Jesus is by no means a perpetrator. So, you know, we're, we don't portray him the same way that uh, perpetrators are portrayed in uh, mystery novels or other kind of stories. But there is something uh, similar, a similar principle here that our gospel talks about today. And that's Jesus is the one who fulfills and crowns with its meaning the law and the prophets. Everything that had been uh, revealed to the people of Israel in anticipation of Jesus, especially the law of God, you know, that was first given through Moses and, you know, and then repeated, you know, several times over. Um, we could see that Jesus is the one who is the purpose of it. He's not the replacement of it. Uh, now, did Jesus free us from the punishment that the law prescribed? Yes, he did, but he did not... Um, distract us in any way or take away what the law calls us to do, how the law calls us to live, and what the prophets had been foretelling. In the person of Jesus, all of those centuries of prophecy, now they make sense because in one person we could see the fulfillment of everything that had been hoped for. But as we are reminded of the law, it's important that we also remember that the law was given for our benefit not for God's. God gave us the law so that his love, the covenant that he made with us, could be safeguarded and lived as sincerely and in as life-giving of a way as possible. So, having been fortunate to have known Jesus, to behold him, and to appreciate how Jesus has fulfilled the law and the prophets, let us continue to give him wholehearted homage by keeping his commands, but also by growing in his love and sharing the love that he has given us with all who may need it. Confident in God's unfailing love and providence, we now place our needs and petitions humbly before him. We pray for all of the church's leaders who teach the law of God, that they may always do so with their being reminded of he who fulfilled the law and also with the love in mind, which is the central purpose of all of God's commands. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all world leaders all statesmen, all government officials, that they may all see the wisdom in God's law, as our you know, first reading today has talked about, that many nations will marvel at its wisdom. But we pray that all nations may see the wisdom that has been revealed by God and put it to work in all of their policies and their care for their people. 
For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering from bondage in any way, spiritually, physically, or emotionally. We pray that God, who has fulfilled the law and who is love, may also give them the liberation and the consolation that only he can give. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have died. We pray that God may welcome them to his eternal banquet in heaven in a special way today. We pray for the repose of Joshua Johnson, that he and all others may rest forever in Christ's peace. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, these are our needs and our petitions that we bring before you today. We ask that you grant them according to your goodwill for us, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Holy Spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Holy Spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me of my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the prayers of your people along with these sacrificial offerings, and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints and all of our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may Christ's peace be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God be praised, keep me safe for eternal life.
the blood of Christ to be saved to eternal life. Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been fed sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high, through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life.